I've avoided talking about the Ben 10 reboot a lot on this channel, mainly because I'm just not a huge fan of it and find it to be a waste of my time, but also I feel like it's eroded so much of the identity of this franchise to being just another flashy filler cartoon. But I feel a bit obliged to talk about it here today, because there's an episode of the Ben 10 reboot that almost exactly rehashes the plot from an old episode of the classic series. An episode that has four arms take to the ring and brawl for money is the subject of an episode from both shows. So why don't we compare them head to head today and see why the original works and the reboot doesn't. But wait, there's actually a twist on this one. The reboot episode actually handles the plot better, comparing Ready to Rumble from the classic series and Ringleader from the 2016 reboot made me a bit more open-minded to the possibility of actually considering the reboot tolerable. Super open-minded, I know. Let's just jump right into this. Both episodes start with an intro unrelated to the main plot of the episode, more so in the original than the new one. Ready to Rumble starts with Ben, Gwen, and Grandpa Max sliding on ice cubes down a hill, as Ben turns into Accelerate to have some more fun. This entire scene is only brought up briefly once more in the episode, and has absolutely nothing to further the plot. The reboot episodes kicks off with a similar setup as Ben and Gwen play some Sumo Slammers video game, and Ben beats Gwen. Grandma tells him that it's just the game, and that he still isn't a wrestling champion in the real world. You'd be hard pressed to win a real match at your present size. Well, good night, kids. Well, good night, kids. I just single handedly gave you the exposition required to kickstart the plot of the episode in the high gear. You'll have to prove yourself in the ring, Ben. That's right. Looks like my work here is done. Well, good night, kids. Coincidentally, there is a wrestling championship right outside the rust bucket that intrigues Ben and Gwen into making Ben a costume and having him turn into forearms to compete. Back in the classic episode, Ben misses around on Gwen's computer until he breaks it. That's my brand new XT9000. Ah, don't you miss the late 2000s, when every gadget had a techno HAL 9000 type name? He doesn't tell where he broke it, but discovers the wrestling championship offering a $10,000 grand prize. What a coincidence, the reboot episode also has a $1,000 grand prize. It's funny, you think with inflation that the new show would have a higher number. Maybe kids these days can't count past 1000 Clearly, having half the runtime with the same end goal, the reboot episode skips a lot of the old motivation and jumps right into the fighting. Whereas the classic episode takes us through all the computer stuff to give Ben proper motive to jump into the ring. I feel like a middle ground between these two episodes would be sufficient for this plot. Maybe around 15 minutes. Because while the reboot episode rushes through every plot point and makes your head spin, the classic episode feels boring and slow paced at parts. Plus, I don't know, something about this episode just comes up as bootleg to me. I actually find this common with a bunch of season 4 episodes of the classic series. Weird animation quirks, overuse of weird sound effects, slow and unrealistic dialogue, and terrible boring pacing in a lot of parts. Not to the point of horrible, but certainly enough for it to be noticeable compared to the first two three seasons. Oh look, Grandpa Max is Shazam! I made a whole video on that. We speed up a bit and jump right into the action as Ben sneaks out and has his first fight in the ring. I'll give him this, Forms is totally badass in his presentation here, and comes off as menacing and threatening. He beats the first dude, but before he can talk to the owner about the prize money, he runs to transform back to Ben. Hey kid, you seen a big red guy, four arms, four eyes? Yeah. Uh, don't mind me, Mr. Dimmodome. Just dumpster diving over here. Oh, and that big red alien you saw? Pfft. Yeah, he was just a figment of your imagination. Don't worry about him, he's gone. In retrospect, the classic series did not give a crap about aliens being known by the public. They just treated it like a weird thing, while Ultimate Alien totally makes it a big deal. This is where the reboot is different, and Gwen even suggests to Ben to hide two of his four arms to make himself look more human. Yeah, speaking of that, a big difference between these episodes is the role Gwen has to play. Technically, both stories use Gwen as a motive for Ben to fight, but the reboot actually makes her his wingman and coach throughout the fights, and sees her fully support him. This is something I recognize as a big difference between the classic show and the reboot, and I'm not sure which characterization I prefer more. Sure, the nicer Gwen is a lot more chill and easy to watch, but I mean, that's like making Squidward always happy. Sometimes a character dichotomy is crucial to good characterization, and while them butting heads all the time isn't the best thing in the world, I still prefer it to vanilla Gwen that never questions Ben's actions. Gwen and Forearms enter the arena and see the main opponent they gotta worry about, Iron Kyle. You get a few fights, but honestly, the storyboarding and choreography on these is pretty mid. We basically skip over to the final round after that, it's the main thing we've all been waiting for. Duh. Not yet. Back to the classic episode first. While Gwen is Ben's manager in the new iteration, Ben calls himself Forearms as manager in the classic. Forearms absolutely crushes the competition, as we finish with the fight between him and this porcupine dude. Considering we later got Pierce in this show, I'm just gonna go off on a whim here and assume men of action like spiked character dudes. After Forearms beats Sonic the Hedgehog, his crocodile buddy comes after Ben. Ben manages to escape, and we see a bunch of goons in black suits threaten the two fighters with some sort of deal. I'm just gonna say the only cool thing about this scene is the fact that Paul Lighting voices this guy, with the exact same inflection he later uses for the Dean Alien in Alien Force. But you should be if you disappoint Mr. Beck. 
Someone has been leaking the details of our secret operations to the authorities. So back to catch a bottle and iron Kyle, they fight for a bit until it's revealed that Ben has four arms instead of two. Having two extra arms is clearly well outside the boundaries of sportsmanship. Hey, you know he has metal arms, right? I mean, it's not like he used them. If an Omnitrix falls in the forest and no one is around to hear it, does it really make a sound? I will admit, some of the metaphor jokes here are amusing. In the various places Iron Kyle slams forearms, head is pretty funny too. And regains the upper hand and is one tap away from victory until he suddenly transforms back to Ben and has to run for his life. Gwen gives Ben some water until Ben accidentally spits it out onto Iron Kyle's suit and discovers his weak spot. Yeah, the thing about this show is that the twists and plot points are all based on super small motives and little things. Like how Kyle gets distracted by Gwen saying she's a girl not a guy, or how Ben drinking water is the solution to this fight. He just basically gets lucky, and that kind of makes this show seem a bit more shallow compared to other ones. Ben turns into overflow and reveals Iron Kyle to just be a little skinny dude in a giant metal suit. Nope, rehash of Water Hazard and Volcanus in one scene is inexcusable. Neither of them get the prize money, making pretty much all this pointless. But at least he beats Kyle and Sumo Slammers, right? Back to the classic episode, Ben fights the killer croc and actually cleans his clock, but then gets double teamed by both of them. After a pretty nicely written and boarded fight scene, Ben wins the championship and the $10,000 prize. Imagine if they wrote it like Tobey Maguire, and Ben was like, I need that money! Would that make Grandpa Max the new Uncle Ben? Anyway, getting distracted here, the rest of the classic episode basically changes course as we spend 10 minutes explaining how the two wrestlers are somehow brothers, and their human mother was abducted by these bad guys and tied to a log on a conveyor belt, heading to a saw, and we need to use Ditto to stop them and they somehow need Ben's prize money, and uh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's a bunch of unrelated crap. The ending is similar though, as we find out that Gwen's laptop wasn't actually broken, once again making everything we went through pretty much pointless, although slightly less so than the reboot episode. Overall, both episodes do a pretty mediocre job with the story. While there are aspects of both I like and dislike, I still think that overall the classic episode does a much better job, even though I would still consider it one of the weaker episodes of the original series. Ring Leader pretty much copies the first half of Ready to Rumble, so I think it's safe to say this was a rehash. But what do you think? Which episode works better for you? Do you still like the reboot episode or do you find it to be absolutely horrible? Let me know all your thoughts in the comments down below. Like and subscribe with notifications to support my work. Follow all my socials including Twitter, Discord, and my new Instagram and TikTok with all the links in the description. And with all that said, I'll see you beautiful ladies and jellyfish in the next one.